Hello and welcome to Second Drafts, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. Today on Second Drafts, we're going to finally finish making our Kindle file. By this point, as long as you've been following along, and if I've explained everything properly, you should have your book completely coded and ready to go. If you don't have everything ready to go, then it's alright, because you can always go back and change the code afterwards if you don't like how the book looks. So, let's get started, shall we? Alright, open up your book in Sigil, and we'll get started. The first thing that we'll need to do before we make the Kindle file is update the metadata. What's metadata? It's basically where the digital information is stored about your book. You need to have at least the basics in there, or else it won't allow the creation of the Kindle file. To update the metadata, click Tools at the top, then click Metadata Editor. This will open a new window where we can enter the information. All you need to enter is the title and the author field, and it will allow the creation of the Kindle file. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can add more using the buttons on the right side. If you click Add Basic or Add Role, it will bring up a list of things that you can choose from to add into the metadata. Things like the ISBN, the language, and the description can all be added using Add Basic. People like the editor, cover designer, or additional authors can be added using Add Role. Once you've updated the book the way you want, click OK at the bottom and it will automatically update the metadata. One more thing that you can do before making the Kindle file is you can change the compression of the Kindle Gen plugin or the path where it saves the file. By default, it leaves it at standard compression and saves the file on the desktop. I'm going to leave everything the same, but if you want to change them, check out part 9 of the tutorial videos, as I went over how to change those settings in that. Now we're ready to make the Kindle file. Click Plugins at the top, hover over Output, click Kindle Gen, then click Start on the top right of the new window. Now it's going to go through the process of creating the Kindle file, and depending on how big your book is, it could take some time. Once it completes, it will either tell you if it failed or succeeded at the bottom. And if it succeeded, it will tell you the deliverable file size as well. This is the number you want to pay attention to, as this will affect the delivery fee with Amazon. As we discussed in the last video, if this is too high, you may need to go back and resize or recompress your images to make them smaller. Anything under 1000 kilobytes or 1 megabyte, is fine for a regular size novel. If your novel is particularly big or has a lot of pictures, don't be surprised if it surpasses a megabyte in size. There might not be anything you can do to fix it without compromising the picture quality, but don't let it stress you out. Amazon only charges the delivery fee on books that are in the 70% royalty range, which starts at $299. So if your book is 2 megabytes and priced at $2.99, your base royalty is going to be $2.09, minus $0.30 cents for the delivery fee, for a total of $1.79 royalties for you. The delivery fee may add up, but you don't want the quality of your book to suffer, or readers might be annoyed, which could result in more loss revenue due to poor reviews or a loss recommendation. It's all about the balance you strike. Now, go to where Kindle Gen saved your book, and we'll perform one last check before we finish up. We want to open the book in Kindle Previewer to make sure that there are no issues with the book. You should have already downloaded Kindle Previewer from Part 9 of our tutorial series, so if you haven't already done so, download it now. Kindle Previewer emulates the different types of Kindles out there, 
and lets you see how it will look on those various devices. All you have to do to view your ebook in Kindle Previewer is drag the Kindle file over to the Kindle Previewer window, like so, and then let go. Kindle Previewer will load the Kindle file, and then you're free to look it over. Now, take a moment and appreciate all the hard work you've done so far. You deserve it. All good? All right, let's get back to it then. In Kindle Previewer, you can change the page with the arrows at the top here. You can go to the cover, table of contents, or the NCX table of contents with these buttons, or change the device emulation by clicking devices at the top and selecting which one you want to view as. The biggest thing here is checking to make sure everything looks the way it should. So go through all the pages, click on every link in the table of contents, and change the device you're viewing in to see how it looks on the different style screens. If something looks off, take note of where, and go back to check the code in that section. You may have accidentally left an HTML tag unclosed, or something might be missing in the code, which hopefully is an easy fix. If something looks the way you want on one device, but not on another, it might be because of advanced coding you've used outside of what we've done in the videos. You shouldn't worry about that so much, as it will usually default to a certain style, as the older Kindles sometimes can't read the advanced code you put in. However, if it does look bad on one device, you may want to rethink the code you use, and try for something else to get a different effect. Keep going back and recreating the file as many times as you wish until you have it the way you want. And of course, be proud of how far you've come in your publishing journey. You've earned it. And there we have it. You now have a Kindle file ready to upload to Amazon. In our next few tutorial videos, we'll be creating a Kindle Direct Publishing account and taking the first steps in making your book available for purchase. That's all we have for today's video. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments below, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything, and remember, Second Drafts has everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.